Hi, I'm Ann. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be announcing a kind of readathon in April of 2023. So for those of you who are new to my channel, this year I have a very, very big challenge for myself and I am attempting to read my entire physical TBR in 2023. Yes, it is rather ambitious, but let's see how I do. Now, a lot of the books that are on my physical TBR are books that I can feasibly read in a few days. Um, books that are 300 pages, even the some of the tomes that I'm tackling this month in March, like I can feasibly tackle them relatively quickly. But there's a few that are on my physical TBR that I know that I will need to devote more time to. Um, big short story collections like my HP Lovecraft collection. And another one that comes to mind is Shakespeare. Uh, I have a complete collection of Shakespeare. And if I'm keeping to my challenge and attempting to read my entire physical TBR in 2023, that would include reading every single play of Shakespeare. So instead of being a normal person and say, hey, I should just tackle like a play or two a month. Instead of doing that, I want to read every single play of Shakespeare's in April. And then I was like, oh, you know what would be brilliant if I created a reading challenge for all you guys to participate in for April as well. So this is my announcement video of my challenge for myself as well as my challenge for you. First, you might ask why April? Why did I pick April for Shakespeare when I could have picked like September? Shakespeare September. That would at least have the whole, you know, SS going on. But no, uh, the reason I picked April specifically is because Shakespeare was born in April and he also died in April. So he was born sometime in April. We don't quite know the date, but he was born in April of 1564. And then he died on April 23rd of 1616. So he both was born in April and died in April. So I thought it would be fitting uh, to tackle Shakespeare in April. Now, the challenge to myself is very different than the challenge I am having for the readathon in general. So, I wanted to attempt to read every single play in this book. However, I guess that is a misnomer because I've read quite a few Shakespeare plays already. Um, so those plays I don't necessarily want to force myself to reread. So I wrote a list. I have a list of all the plays that I have read and all the plays that I have not read. And the total comes to 17 plays that I have read and 20 plays that I have not read. So it's much more feasible for me to say, oh yeah, I'm going to read 20 plays as opposed to saying, yeah, I'm going to read 37 plays. That's a lot more. That would mean like I would have to read like a play and a half every single day or something like that, which is crazy. So I will have a list of plays that I have actually here. We'll do on this side of plays that I have read and then plays that I have not read. So the plays that I have read are um, The Com Comedy of Errors, Love's Labor's Lost, Romeo and Juliet, Midsummer Night's Dream, The Taming of the Shrew, The Merchant of Venice, Much Ado About Nothing, Julius Caesar, As You Like It, Twelfth Night, Hamlet, Othello, Macbeth, King Lear, Pericles, The Winter's Tale, and The Tempest. So uh, most of the comedies I've read, a most of the, ro uh, the romances, I think they're called, they're not quite tragedies, but they're not quite like comedies. Um, and then I've read a few tragedies as well. Now, all the ones that I have not read, most of them are the histories. We're going to read a lot of Henry this month. So I have Henry the Sixth, part one, part two, and part three. I have Richard the Third, Titus Andromachus. I've never even heard of that one. Uh, Two Gentlemen of Verona, which is a comedy. King John, Richard the Second, Henry the Fourth, part one and two. Henry the Fifth, Merry Wives of Windsor. Trollis and Cressida? Trollis? I think that's how you pronounce it. All's Well That Ends Well, Measure for Measure, Antony and Cleopatra. C Coriolanus? C Coriolis? <laughs> I don't know. And Timon Timon of Athens? Cymbeline? Cymbeline? And Henry VIII. Henry VIII. Oof. Interesting because that is the reign that William Shakespeare started to write in was Henry VIII's reign. And then, of course, Henry VIII died, and then he became the Queen's troop. 
uh, part of Hen uh, Elizabeth the first. Um, now, a couple of these, all's well that ends well, as well as measure, measure for measure, I believe I have read. But my rule was if I don't remember anything about them, then I have to reread it. I also have on the list at the bottom, and this composes the last like 50 pages of this book. Uh, I think it's like 60, 70 pages. Um, and that is the poems. So there, and that includes the sonnets and a few other like, they're not plays, they're just they're just short poetry. So I decided to include that even though so I've decided to include that as just like one thing as the poems or the sonnets, as opposed to, you know, name out each one, because, you know, all together, they add like 50 pages, which is about the length of like one play. So now that we get that out of the way, that is the challenge for myself, which is obviously a big challenge. I was like, why don't I turn this into a challenge for the overall booktube community as well? And don't worry, I made it like simple. And the only rule of this challenge uh, is that you need to read one Shakespeare play in April. That's the only for sure thing. Like if you succeed in reading one play of Shakespeare, you've completed the challenge, okay? that That's it. <laughs> However, um, I do have like extra prompts that I thought would be fun. I have obviously the number one prompt is read a Shakespeare play that is obvious. Then I also broke it down into there are four types of plays that Shakespeare wrote. There are tragedies, comedies, histories, and romance. And oddly enough, he wrote them in a specific order. So his comedies are very much his early plays. And then you went to um, tragedies. Um, this was kind of at the same timeline that he lost his son, um, Hamlet, uh, who is considered the inspiration for the name Hamlet. And he started writing a lot of darker tragedies. Then he started writing a lot of histories, I believe. And then he reverted back a little bit to a mixture of comedies and tragedies with the romance. And that includes like The Tempest and The Winter's Tale. So um, the next challenge, the next four prompts are just read one play that is each type that Shakespeare has. So for example, for comedies, you could pick like Much Ado About Nothing or A Midsummer Night's Dream. Um, for tragedy, you could pick Romeo and Juliet, Macbeth, Hamlet, Julius Caesar, those things. For history, you could pick any of the Henrys. If you want to buddy read any of the Henrys with me, let me know, because I have a feeling those are the ones I'm going to really struggle with. Uh, and then, of course, the romance, you know, I mentioned a couple, Winter's Tale, uh, The Tempest. I would recommend The Tempest. It's my favorite romance. And then the next prompt, I guess technically the second prompt, or you would could also say the fifth prompt. Um, that is read one of his sonnets. So his sonnets are, I believe, what are they, 14 lines? They're all the same length and they're very short. So just take an afternoon, maybe look up some explanation for it because I remember in college, I spent like two hours in like my class with my teacher going through one sonnet to try to understand it. So these sonnets aren't exactly easy to understand. Um, so maybe just take an afternoon, read a sonnet, muse about it, or just like read it once and say, yeah, that made no sense and just move on. That's, that's a good solution too. Uh, the next prompt is um, something that I feel like is obvious when you're reading a play, you wanna actually see it performed. And obviously most of us don't can't afford to actually see a Shakespeare play performed. I have seen a couple performed, but I also cannot afford it right now. Um, so that is just watch a Shakespeare adaptation. There's a couple of things you can choose. You can choose to watch like a looser movie adaptation um, where maybe it's not got all the lines from the play, um, but you know, it's the story. <laughs> and you may watch like a more modern adaptation. For example, um, Twelfth Night was uh, adapted into like a modern teen drama. She's the man. It's very fun. I highly recommend it. So you could watch like a modern adaptation or you could watch something more historical. Like for example, uh, Much Ado About Nothing was made into uh, a 1990s film um, starring Emma Thompson. That one is also pretty good. Um, there's also a few adaptations of Romeo and Juliet that stick pretty close to the actual play. You could also go the route, and I'm thinking of doing this for quite a few of the plays that I'm not super familiar with, and watching a full uh, 
play on YouTube. There's quite a lot of um, professional as well as like semi-professional performances of Shakespeare plays on YouTube that you just uh, type in the name of that play and you will probably find a amateur or professional performance of it. I recommend those because they really helped me when I was reading Sophocles plays. So those are all the prompts. They're very easy prompts. All you have to do is read a Shakespeare play and the rest is like just a fun challenge. Like, oh, do you want to read a tra tragedy? Do you want to be read a romance or a comedy? Um, this, I think this is going to be a really fun challenge. And especially since I know a lot of you probably already have your TBRs and you don't want to like add a whole bunch of stuff to it. And that's why I'm keeping this um, challenge or readathon very, very simple. It's just going to go to the first from the first day of April to the last day of April. So it's an entire month long readathon where all you have to read is one Shakespeare play. But I would recommend if you pick out a specific Shakespeare play to uh, read, watch that ad adaptation that goes with it. You don't have to, that's not in the rules of the challenge, but I recommend it because it really helps you to understand the play more to not only read it, but see it adapted. So uh, you guys are probably gonna have fun with this challenge. Reading just one Shakespeare play in a month, not too bad. Me, however, I am going to have fun, but also be completely drained by the end of April. So we'll see how I go. I still will probably be reading any books that I don't finish this month in March um, that I received or I bought recently. I'll be rolling over. So I will have some like fun lighter reads. Uh, but for the most part, this man and I will become very close friends in the next month. So let me know if you're interested in um, in joining the challenge, the readathon. Um, do you think I'm completely crazy? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, like, subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. Have a great day. Bye. Mm -hmm.